Okay, today then, I'm going to show you how to get PSP up and running with Retrobat. It's a very easy tutorial, but I'm going to make these PSP games look absolutely amazing, and so can you. So I'm going to go through some video settings with you and just get you the best performance possible. So check this video out. Okay, so I'm looking at PSP today, and believe it or not, we can really upscale these PSP games on Retrobat up to around 4K. Uh, that's dependent on your hardware on your computer, and we can really make these games look amazing. So before I start, just let me just ask if you can hit notifications, and if you like this video, uh, check out my playlist, like I say, and subscribe to my channel. It really helps me out a lot here. So first things first, what I'm going to recommend is right-clicking on Retrobat shortcut open file location and let's just open up your bat gui system list now if you don't have this what i can see just here some people in the past have said they can't see this i think that's just a case of not installing direct x all in one package and if you've not done that and you're having that issue then check out my full setup guide and that will show you how to correctly set up retrobat from scratch so when we're on with this setup guide so we're going to go down and find psp and we're going to actually locate which file extensions Retrobat wants. So very commonly, we got ISO here. We got .CSO, uh, .ELF, and .PRX. So your most common file for PSP is ISO and possibly .CSO. So if you've got any of these file extensions, then it's going to be fine. So let's just go out of this and let me just remind you that for PSP, we don't actually need a BIOS file, which is a big bonus. So in the ROMs folder, you're going to find PSP, and it's near the bottom here. So let's open up PSP, and I've got an ISO image of one of my PSP games, which is Ridge Racer. So uh, Ridge Racer, it was really popular during the PS1 era, and it was one of the first PS1 games I actually played. Okay, so we're now into Retrobat and we can see the PSP PlayStation Portable icon. So let's open this up. And as always, let's go to the main menu and get some artwork in a preview video for this. So Scraper and Scrape Now. And again, just like the issues you might be facing if you don't see text in back GUI, if you have any issues with scraping or whatever, take a look at my main setup guide. It's almost at the top of my playlist. Uh, I think it's called the ultimate or definitive. I've titled that one. So on with this one, we're going to finish scraping and go to game settings, update game list, really update game list. Yes. So let's just open this one up and test if it's working. We should have a bezel on this, but I'm going to show you how to disable it. And here we go. So we got the PSP bezel around this or decoration. And just like the original PS1 game, we got a little game there like the PS1 version has. One, go! So as we can see there, it's working perfectly fine. But look, I'll say we can make this look even better. And uh, got to love that 90s techno dance music. So what I'm going to do to uh, do some changes to video settings with uh, PSP, if I go to view options by pressing my select button and advanced system options, first of all, under emulator, we got two versions of this to use. Uh, by default, Retrobat is using Libretro PPSSPP, which is a RetroWatch core of PPSSPP. What I'm gonna do is just leave this to auto for this. And like I say, that's gonna just pick up and use Libretro RetroArch Core. Right, so we also seen some decorations around the screen just now. Some of you might like that, but wait till you see what I do with this to make it look even better. So first of all, decorations, I'm gonna to put to none. Game aspect ratio, I'm gonna to put to 16 by nine. Shader set for this, I'm gonna to put to enhanced. And if I go down to integer scaling, I'm going to just make sure this one's on, but Retrobat should detect it is on MWay by uh, keeping this on auto, but whatever. 
Uh, vertical sync, I'm going to put yes. That's going to reduce screen tearing in 3D games. Uh, auto configure controllers, I'm going to keep this to auto. And of course, that's going to detect is on. Uh, under video, we got video mode. Obviously, you need to set this to your display. Uh, mine's 1080p at 60 hertz. Now, interestingly enough, we got visual rendering on this as well. When just like internal resolution, the visual rendering options are really going to enhance these games. So we got smooth games uh, by linear filtering. I'm going to just turn this on, but leave this to auto if you wish. Uh, Anastrop filtering. So like it says, it's going to enhance the quality of textures in the game itself. Again, just like internal resolution, if you've got the hardware on your computer to support this, then you know, bump it all the way up. Uh, for this, I'm gonna just go to say two times. And even if you can only get to two times, it's gonna be a massive difference over how PSP games originally looked, which is just polygons everywhere. So anti-aliasing, again, we've got up to eight times. Now, for those who's not sure what anti-aliasing means, it means that it's going to smooth out, say, for example, I always give a good example of a, of a fence. Uh, with games, uh, especially PC games, you'll see that things aren't so even on the sides of, say, the fence. Uh, you'll see that they go up in steps very slightly. So anti-aliasing will smooth that out. But remember, just like internal resolution, anti-aliasing it's going to be very hardware dependent. So just bear that in mind. But having said that, going to two times, it's going to still be a big improvement if you can handle it. We've also got textures enhancement. So uh, textures enhancement, it's almost like a filter for the textures. I'm going to leave this one to auto. Texture scaling. Now, again, this is going to almost uh, make the textures in the game, for example, the roads, uh, the other cars, it's going to bring those textures to life so they're not going to look so pixelated but again just like the other things uh which i'm saying is hardware dependent texture scaling is also going to be very wearing on your hardware so i'm going to just bump this up to two times now if i go down to drivers and show you video uh auto is going to pick up open gl uh some psp games just like other games they want different video drivers. So sometimes OpenGL works, or in fact, most of the time, uh, there is some games out there which might need you to switch to Vulkan or even a DirectX version. But as you can see, Ridge Racer is working fine with OpenGL. Okay, and finally, what I'm gonna say is if we go to internal resolution, uh, by bumping these up, this is gonna make our small display for PSP games get bigger and it's also going to tidy up and make the resolution obviously better so for example i'm going to put this one to four times for now and that's it for the video settings so let's go back into ridge racer Are you three two one go And there we go, as you can see, originally how small it looked and how bad it kind of looked to what we got towards the end of full screen. And it's quite comparable with a modern day game almost. It looks pretty good to me. So um, yeah, check out my RetroBat playlist. Uh, also hit notifications if you like what you've seen today and subscribe. And also be sure to check out my membership options and also join my community. But until next time, stay retro.